Um, so this, my team has 32 community workers, people that live there and now have a job. They are paid, they have salaries, and their job is to transform their communities. So this whole deal about you can get the community as volunteers, but you don't have to pay them, we need to rethink that. This whole thing that if a promoter gets paid, he wouldn't be loyal to the community, I challenge each of us and our own loyalty. I get paid to do my work. So if you cannot trust that the community can be paid and do the job, you cannot trust that I can do that job, or any of us for that matter. But I also have a technical team. You have people there with masters and PhDs, and, uh, and you have an administrative team because the idea is to create an institute of community participation. That's what Latino Health Access is. Latino Health Access is an institute through which we are learning to participate and we are learning why people do not participate so they can be included and organized. And there are many reasons why people don't participate. And people tell me, well, America, but is, is it true that they don't participate because they are afraid? Or is it that they are, their husbands don't let them do it? Or is it this, is it that? Well, it's a lot of things. You know, people do not participate because they have had horrible experiences in the past, because they don't have time, because they don't trust you, because they are, they, whatever, because they, they, were, they went to that place once and they were mistreated, or whatever. Um, there are zillions of reasons. And the right answer is to focus on their reasons. So if the reason is that it's not relevant for them, make it relevant. If the reason is lack of time, then how do we find time? We are answering everything. I mean, the most progressive group will answer everything. Well, let's provide childcare and transportation. Well, that's not the reason why they are not participating. The reason is because they have had horrible experiences with other groups, even if you provide childcare. So let's try to create projects in which they, have, they could have good experiences. And then, again, start participating. So, this is our children initiative where we have 185 children and youth as promotores. These are community workers. Our youngest promotor is six. <laughs> and these kids, these kids are learning to participate by doing outreach, by talking about apples and exercise and things that are not fair. And promotores are great leaders. And when we include the community in, um, in working to transform their own communities, you work with the community twice. They are your employees, so they are trained inside, and then they are outside again in the community because they live there, and it's a great uh, role model for others. Promotores do outreach. They work on health fairs. They work in cultural things. I mean, we cannot separate our communities from our culture, and, and people are really um, very united around this. Um, we, I, we believe that knowledge shouldn't be a monopoly. So when people say, why you have community workers in diabetes? Because diabetes belongs to all of the people with diabetes. This is not a doctor thing. Mental health is not a psychologist thing. So people should have the right to know more and to practice what they know and to help each other with that knowledge. They manage data, they share data and do capacity building, they teach classes. Um, they support people in the community. They do fundraising here. They are making tamales to pay for eye surgery for people. Uh, kids get organized to fight liquor license, and sometimes they win, sometimes they lose. Right now, we are fighting for an alcohol moratorium. This is our domestic violence project. We don't have a center. We rent a place. There is not a single park in that area of Santa Ana for 65,000 people. Um, this is a laundry place where they are meeting with a group on domestic violence. We take people camping and retreats so they can think about change, and we find the space for them to bring their families, and we take care of everything else so they can join the reflection and the dialogue. We have many programs, but this is the one I want to share in the final minutes that I have. We don't have a place to play. Our communities are very sick. The design is very sick. Our communities are designed to be sick. So Santa Ana doesn't have a lot of open space, and for sure the area where we have our major um, initiative doesn't have a lot. It's 0.5 acre per 1,000 people. Um, this is something that is called a park in Santa Ana. 
And I always, I laugh about this because the only, the only uh, sport that you can play in that park is uh, theoretical basketball. <laughs> so this is what we see in our communities, are the kids in dumpsters and a lot of dropout and people overcrowded, you know, living in a living room, buildings that say that people cannot play. This is also in the same building. Moms that taking care of kids in Newport while our kids are alone. And there are other kids taking care of these kids. And that's why the children initiative is so important because children are caretakers in our community. And, uh, and then, you know, fighting the whole national picture in which marketing is uh, uh, targeting our kids without any type of mercy. So what we do, we teach people about food. We find places in churches, no matter where, so people can exercise. We train women because they want to exercise. They want to look pretty, and we invite them to be pretty. But then we train them as leaders. And once they get awareness, they are trained, and then we recruit them. And some of those women already are community workers in my program, leading the strategy for um, healthy living in Santa Ana. So these moms have been organizing to get a park, a first park in that area. And after several years, this is Araceli, now one of our promotoras that started as a mom in the project. She's there giving testimonial in city council about the lack of parks. These are our children, uh, our children promotores in the meantime training and also giving testimonial in city council about how unfair it is that they cannot ride a bike, you know, in their own terms, in their own way. Uh, this is the piece of land that we got. We fought for it. It's half acre. And, and finally, we have the first park for that area of Santa Ana. St. Joseph Hospital was the partner. It has been a lot of work. These are the drawings of what is going to be the park. Thanks to the California Endowment, we have a great coalition transforming schools, uh, transforming the health department. We are, um, we are proposing uh, a tax measure to fund uh, the schools so they can open the schools close after hours. We are training the youth in fighting for a safer uh, city. Um, this is the latest meeting that we had with 280 people in a gathering, just people from the community discussing the issues of safety, lack, lack of open space, etc., in Santa Ana. And I wanted to highlight that that woman that is facilitating one of the groups in the gathering was a victim of domestic violence, was a volunteer with us, is now one of our promotores working in the domestic violence program. And now she's facilitating for her own community to be part of this dialogue. You know, and this is, what, this is her facilitating one of the groups. This is our program on inviting Latinos to become citizens. We have created our policy department three years ago. Now we are working with Naleo to mobilize the Latino vote as part of our health strategy. I just want to share with you one good news is that Santa Ana doesn't have data on health. The cities in Orange County do not have data. The data belongs to the county, to the public health departments. As long as that happens, we will not be able to make the cities accountable or be able to create a plan to become a healthier place. For 15 years, we have been trying for the mayor of Santa Ana to open up to the idea of becoming a healthy city and committing himself to that purpose. This year, we are going to be 15 in August. And the mayor, in our last meeting, said that he wants that data. And he's joining us in the creation of a healthier city. How, how that is, is going to happen, because we are there. But it's very good to happen, because Latino health access alone cannot make Santa Ana or Orange County a healthier place. We have understood that we need the city, we need the national partners, we have joined them, and hopefully um, we will have better stories to tell in the future. Thank you very much. <laughs>